This conference will now be recorded. Okay, let's see if we can review where we are when manager accounting, uh, where we have to make something and there's a manager accounting cycle. That cycle consists of, first of all, determining unit costs and selling price. That's the first thing we have to do. And we spend time on that because that, that's the main essence of managerial accounting. You've got to determine how much the product costs and then fit the selling price based on that. Then we journalize entries. We post to the ledger. We have some new accounts. Uh, the raw materials and working process inventories. We have our financial statements and there are two new financial statements that we have. Cost of goods manufactured, cost of goods sold. And we have the spread, we have this template to come up with the unit cost. There are three parts of it, raw materials. Typically we were multiplying unit cost times quantity to get that total cost. But, but if we are in a situation where we have an item that will impact more than one, this printer card, this is my black printer card. So, and I paid, I guess, about $100 for it. In a situation like that, where the cost of the raw material, raw material is going to be spread over more than one item, we will divide the total cost of this by how many I can use, how many that can be produced. So we haven't looked at that that much, and but if this costs a hundred dollars, which is about what it costs, and if I can print fifty books, then the unit cost in the case of this would be a hundred divided by fifty or two. So when you see that, you just have to realize that. So the raw materials can work one or two ways. They're small. It takes one or more to make the item. Unit cost times the quantity. On the other hand, if we, we make a major purchase that's to be spread over more than one, then we look at the cost and divide it by what we spread it over. We add up all the raw materials costs, direct labor, if it takes one or more hours to make the item, we multiply the labor rate times productivity. If it takes, if we can make more than one in an hour, then we're going to divide the productivity and the labor rate to get the labor cost. And then manufacturing overhead, and I've given you a simple way to do that. Take the total overhead, divide it by the quantity to be produced, that gives you the unit uh, overhead cost. Then we simply add total unit cost for raw materials. That's number six. Total unit cost for labor. That's number eight. And total unit cost for manufacturing overhead. And we add those together. I guess this is seven to get the total unit cost. Then we have a selling price multiple and we always multiply the multiple times the unit cost so that we can get the correct selling price. You gotta always get this done first. And then we talk about determining the predetermined overhead rate. And there's a formula for that because when we get ready to allocate uh, overhead in the journal entries, we use it with a POR, a predetermined overhead rate. We look at the total overhead. We look at the total quantity to be produced. If the labor productivity is two, that is if it takes two hours to make it, one item, then it's gonna take 400 hours. We divide 400 into 400 and we get one for the POR. That POR we'll see a little bit later is utilized and making the journal entry to estimate the overhead. And if we can make more than one in an hour, then we would divide. Okay. With journal entries, I tell you, we would look at these in stages. So now we to uh, two in the uh, 
item two in that uh, manager accounting cycle, item two, making journal entries. And so to help you work with making the journal entries easier, I put them in stages. That stage one, acquisition of the raw materials, a set of journal entries. Stage two, transfer of the goods to work in process, a set of journal entries. Stage three, transfer to finish goods, uh, a journal entry. Stage four, sell the item, and we have several journal entries there. Then stage five is payment of the selling and administrative expenses plus dividends. And so in general, we have our journal entry set. In the raw material stage, we're always debiting raw materials and crediting accounts payable. Now we may form the, co the company and have a type one. We may acquire some assets and have a combination of a seven and 12. But the key managerial ones, whenever we buy in that raw materials, this is the journal entry we're gonna make. We get ready for stage two to make the item. There's at least three journal entries. There's bringing in the raw materials. You got to make this for however many raw materials you have. Then we have to pay the workers. And then we have to estimate the overhead. So this is where that POR comes in. We're going to multiply the POR times the number of labor hours. And so this gives us the dollar cost that involved. Stage four, we transfer and we get the items completed. We transfer them to finished goods. Excuse me, stage three. And then in stage four, we sell the items. And there's gonna be three journal entries. That's gonna be a journal entry to uh, make the sale. That's going to be another journal entry to transfer from finished goods to cost of goods. So based on our inventory conventions, FIFO, LIFO, our weighted average, any of those can be involved. And then we also have to work with the manufacturing overhead. We've estimated that overhead. When we make this journal entry in stage two, we estimate what the overhead is going to be. When we get to stage four, this is where we make the estimate. We're going to look at what the actual overhead costs are. So we made an estimate that it was 600,000. Overhead actual cost comes in is 16. We have to make the estimate because we got to do all of this prior to all of these costs coming in. But once they come in and when there's a difference, we're going to take that difference and put it in cost of goods sold. So in this case, if we estimate the overhead to be 600, it was actually 610, we were short 10,000. So we underapplied it. We debit cost of goods sold and credit manufacturing overhead. What you got to know in making that entry is that the manufacturing overhead account has to move to zero. It always has to move to zero with the journal entry. And then we have our selling and administrative expenses. So another way that we can look at this is with this worksheet. So you see on this worksheet, and I think this worksheet is in course content. In stage one, here are the acquisition journal entries. So when we buy in the raw materials, this is stage one. Stage two, the transfer of the raw materials and hiring the workers so we can work on the items. Stage two, a set of journal entries. Stage three, transfer to finished goods. Stage four, sell an item, make the transfer from finished goods, cost of goods sold, 
and work with the overall unapplied manufacturing overhead. Work with the overhead over unapplied. And then in stage five, that's when we have our selling administrative expenses. So this is just another way to show you everything on one page uh, in terms of what's happening when we make an item, combine the raw materials, doing the work on it, transferring to finished goods. So this is the managerial uh, process. So let me get that out. Now you have the set of worksheets and you had a little job that you're supposed to work on, but you'll be working with the Excel worksheet and you're only going to have one situation. You don't have, you know, when we have a quiz, we have one, two, three, or four, but you're going to have one specific situation in your problem. And so you utilize this Excel worksheet to come up with your total unit cost, and that's always selling price and PUR. So you're just going to be on one column. So you'll put this on this Excel sheet. Then for the journal entries, for the journal entries, you put them in here. Now we may have the others, but you know, these are the journal entries. They don't change. You just got to put the right dollar amounts in. So these are the journal entries. Here are the tier counts. Cost of goods sold, cost of goods manufactured. How much did it cost us to manufacture the item? Cost of goods sold, how much were the cost of the items we sold? And if you notice on cost of goods manufactured, you see those same three things, direct materials, direct labor, and the applied manufacturing overhead to get the total cost. Now, this is on a total dollar basis, but it's always those three items. And when we have a manufacturing item, we want to see what our, what was the cost of the items, cost of goods sold. And then we have our trial balance, income statement, and we have to work with that. Stable retain earnings, balance sheet, and of course you're supposed to add the statement of cash flow. So this is what we use. Are there any questions on anything I've said? Okay, so Let's just move this down. I gave you some short problems so that we could look at aspects of what we are. I gave you some short problems so we could look at aspects of where we are in the problem. So you just look at one part of the problem. Eventually you have to put them all together, but what we're trying to do today is to look at one part of the problem uh, so team one, which of the following manufacturers is most likely not to use job order cost accounting? We got C in oil refinery. Why? Um, because it's the only one that's not a manufacturer, so they're not actually going through the process of making it. So you don't think they get oil out of the Gulf and bring it into Houston and refine it so it can be turned into gasoline. That's manufacturing. So C is correct. But with A, B, and D, we make an A particular item. So that's job order. With oil and converting that to gasoline, it's a continuous process. You don't have just one little raw material. You got all like all the gasoline that comes out. So you can't just say the cost of, uh, and then have a product to look at it. So that's the answer. Okay.
team two in a job order cost accounting system, which account will be debited in the recording process? We chose A, raw materials inventory. Okay. That looks good to me. Let's see, y'all so smart. In a job order costing system, which account will be debited in recording a transfer of raw materials to the manufacturing process? Team three. So, for three, it's going to be D, work in process inventory, because it's the process of being manufactured and it's not final or finished good yet. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Those moans have all of those speakers on in there. Okay. Team four, the predetermined overhead rate is five dollars per direct labor hour. What we're saying is that the POR is five. That POR you've been calculating. Job two thirteen required three hundred direct labor hours, of which two hundred hours were incurred during the current accounting period. How much overhead would be applied to job 213 during the current period? So the thing is, when we get ready to make a journal entry to record overhead, we typically calculate a POR, which is five. So that's the POR, which is five. And for the most part, we're going to apply it to a base, which is the uh, labor hours. So what we feel is that when we try to estimate the overhead in process, remember, we do not have all the overhead costs incurred yet. And so we calculate a POR. So this is where we use that POR. So, and let's see, going back to team two, what stage are we in here? What stage is this? Jenny, what stage is this? Wait a minute. Team two, that's not her. Yeah. Um, for our question, wouldn't it be stage one since we're buying raw material? Well, you actually have one, but... The, you're right, this is stage one. So this is activity, but this should be stage one. Team two should have answered. All right, team three, what stage are we in here? Team three, what stage are we in? Karina? She is thinking about it. Okay, team four, what stage are we in? We have anybody here from team four? They're packing all y'all points today. Y'all better answer them. Well, wait, I'm going to take a guess. Is it stage two? Where? On three? Yeah, that's stage two. Why you had to guess? Because I'm not for sure. Okay. Stage two. And I got, I got a question. Yes. Um, I'm in your I'm in your classroom right now. Is there a heater? It's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Girl, no, there's no heater. I'll be in there tutoring. And I be freezing my butt off. You just gotta bring no, a blanket. Me. It is. It's so cold. It's as cold as outside. Mm. All right, I'm done. Um, uh, there's a heat in my office. I guess it 
have to get the secretary to let you in to get the heater. So, is anybody going to get the heater? Now we're going to tug it out. Hi. Right. Okay. What are y'all doing on, what are people doing on spring break? A little break in the action because I, I I didn't think we we're having spring break. I looked at the old calendar. So what are you all? When doing? is spring break? Next Wait, week. Next no. week. What's next yeah, week? Ready next week? Yeah, next oh, week. week. Well, you work. Take off of work. Break. I know I took off work. Hey Barry, what you gonna do on spring break? See, see, listen. My birthday on the 15th, you know, I do take cash apps, cash, credit, EBT, gift cards. We take all that. My birthday on the 15th. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, my mama told me she's going to take me somewhere. That's all I know. That's, That's it. That's all I want to know. Who's going somewhere? Yeah, but you know, I'm going to put that cash up in, in the group. Check y'all going to hit me up. I just want $2. That's it. Just $2. I'm just wondering how we're going to be next week when we come the week when we come back. I can see we'll have to meet virtually that week to see if I get any emails. All right. Team four, you have plenty of time. What stage are we in? I don't want to. Brooke, who's team four? Since y'all got the teams, I don't even want to look it up. Who's team four? It's me. online. Oh, okay. Who is me? Sabrina. Oh, wait. Am I team four? Or was she team four? No, Brooke's go. Brooke, look on you. Who, who's team four, Brooke? I got to look at my Excel sheet. Hold on. <laughs> I don't got it out. We're on question four, right? We're on question four. What team are you on, Sabrina? Yeah, I'm on I'm team four. It's C. So, how did you get C a thousand? How did you get a thousand? How did she get a thousand? What's the journal entry gonna be? That bitch. The bitch is going to be in there at the gallery when you ain't looking for it. You know, what? No um, it's the direct labor hours incurred during the accounting period. And what do we multiply these hours by? Um, it's five times 200. <laughs> you it's a thousand. What's the journal entry? Billy of you to make you feel. What's the journal entry gonna be? So we calculate the amount. We'll come back to you. Tell me the journal entry. So we're just looking at parts of the problem. Let's see. Five. Let's see. Who's on team five? Who's team five? Me. I'm not going to lie, Mr. Void. I didn't know how to calculate that one. Because I know beginning goods in process and ending goods in process are included, but I put E. Not in the above. I didn't that. see it. I don't know how to calculate it. You didn't see how to calculate it? Yeah. Okay, let me see. Hey, it's B, right? Somebody says B. <sighs> oh, I know what I'll do. Let me just see if I can. Gracious. Oh. 
Mexico. Everybody, if you would, take create a T account. So if you would create a T account, everybody do that. Create a T account. So I'm gonna go in here and insert table um, to column. Well, it would make it small. Okay, so let's assume this is a T account. And let's merge the cell. And what, what T account am I going to put here? What T account do you think it's going to be? Direct labor. There is no T account for direct labor. Market so over here. That's not the one. What T account are we probably going to look at? Working process. Thank you. Who said that? We're going to look at the working process T account. So when we look at the working process T account, We'll have the beginning balance. And what was the beginning balance in working process? 20,000. So let's see, maybe insert. Let's put this here so we can see it a little easier. So the beginning balance is 20,000. The direct materials are what? That's the next thing I'm going in, direct materials. How much were the direct materials? Was that 100,000? 100,000. All right, so y'all working with me now. What's the next thing I'll be in here? Direct labor. And so what does it say about the, how much is direct labor? That's what? That is the question mark. So the direct labor is question mark. How much is the MOH? Message MOH, 40,000, right? Yes. And cost of goods manufactured. So that's the COGM, COGM. And the cost of goods manufactured would be the amount that we transfer to finish goods. So once we put all our costs in here, we don't finish them all. So the cost of goods manufactured was 200,000. So this is this journal entry where we would have debit finished goods and credit the cost of goods manufactured for 200,000. It tells us the ending balance is how much? 12,000? So how much was the direct labor? We use our T account. So how much was our direct labor? Fifty-two 
How much was it, Usha? Fifty-two thousand. Fifty-two thousand. How did you get fifty-two thousand? In about. Oh, uh, we add. Uh, actually, we okay. Uh, the beginning working process is twenty thousand. So we add direct uh, material used uh, on working process. Then we add um, uh, manufacturer overhead forty thousand, and. And we subtract from our cost of goods manufactured, uh, which uh, have our uh, twenty thousand. So we get our uh, direct paper over it. So fifty-two thousand. So we would have what? Add twenty, a hundred and forty, and subtract the two hundred and twelve. That, so the fifty-two thousand make this equal to twelve at the end. One sixty plus fifty-two is two twelve. So two twelve minus two hundred is twelve. That looks good. And we give Miss Usha some. Credit for that, maybe we'll move into the A range. Okay, so this is just, you know, get you thinking about that working process account and what it does. So we're just looking, so we, we just looked at the working process account and that account is in what stage? What stage is the working process account in? Two. Stage two. Okay. Here's our next one. Company records show the following data, team six. Raw materials inventory, working process inventory, finished goods inventory. Then we have the ending balances. Raw materials, working process, finished goods, raw materials purchased direct labor, applied manufacturing overhead, sales and cost of goods sold. So do we see that? So what do we want to do? Uh, let's see, this will come up. Here's cost of goods manufacturing and a cost of goods sold statement. So I want all teams to work on this. All teams should have worked on it. But what you'd be doing is filling out these statements. Okay, then we answer the question. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill out these statements and then answer the question. Does everybody understand what we're doing? Anybody don't because you got to do this for midterm. You got to produce these statements. So I'm going to give you all uh, 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes to prepare these statements. Okay.
Do we have those two statements prepared? Brooke and Ken, are we all set for 11.30 tomorrow? Yes. Are we meeting in your office? Where are we meeting? At his at his thing? Or? I guess we can walk over to my office. I'll get there around 11.15 or so. Then we can walk over there at 11.30. Okay. Yep, that works. You all in 206, correct? See correct. If the, see if the computer will cut on in there. I'm just. <sighs> Last time I was there, it wasn't working. So, do you all have the Costco's manufacturing statement done and Costco's show statement done? Do you all have those done? Laketon, we have it done? Not yet, sir. So first thing's gonna be on there is what? Beginning balances for raw materials inventory. So the raw materials beginning inventory was what? Hundred thousand, correct? Let's make this thing smaller here. What's the next thing gonna go on the statement? Purchase raw materials. How much did we purchase? One million two hundred thousand. Raw materials ending was how much? Two hundred thousand. So therefore, the raw materials used in production was how much? How much raw materials is used in production? What is that complicated calculation? It's uh, 300,000. Thank you, use more than that. If you had $100,000 in the bank, and if you put another million two hundred thousand in the bank, and you had 200000 at the end, how much did you spend? Oh, that's one so, Say what? Once again, that's 1.5. 1. If you have, let's look at it again. You had $100 in the bank. Then you put in another 1200 Then your ending bank balance is 200 How much money did you spend? Mm -hmm. You started out with 100 You put another 1200 in. You got 200 now in the bank at the end of the month. How much did you spend? Uh, Once again, you, your bank account was $100 at the beginning of the month. You deposited yeah, one, two. You got 200 in there now. How much did you spend? How much 
How much did you spend? How much, Brooke? What you say? Okay, you had one hundred. You say one hundred thousand. You had one hundred thousand. You had a hundred dollars in the bank at the beginning of the period. Okay. You put twelve hundred in. You got two hundred at the end of the period. How much money did you spend? I spent twelve hundred. You had a hundred. I had a hundred thousand. You spent one million. I had a hundred thousand and I spent one thousand two hundred. You put a million two hundred in, and now oh, you and got two hundred left. Okay. okay, sorry, it's confusing. Me. Hold on. Nine hundred. Eleven hundred. How'd you get eleven hundred? Okay, so the beginning was a hundred. Plus what you put in the bank, which was twelve hundred, and then subtract the two hundred remaining at the end. I got a million one hundred. Remember those AJEs for supplies way back in the day? Raw materials at the beginning of the period, plus the purchases, less the ending raw materials, tells you the raw materials you used in production. Direct labor, how much is our direct labor? 600,000. Thank you, 600,000. How did I get over here? How much? <laughs> Over here. That's three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. So the total manufacturing cost was what? Three hundred thousand. That two million. Just add those three numbers together. So million one plus six plus nine three, that's two million. Then our beginning working process inventory was what? Two hundred thousand. So we gonna add that to the number. Our ending working process inventory was what? Three hundred thousand. So we're going to subtract that. So what was the cost of goods manufactured? Not on it. So we're going to go off the screen. We're going to add 200 and subtract 300. So it looked like a million nine to me. Yeah. Yeah. The key people should just say the Okay. When we do a cost goods manufacturing statement, that's three parts labor, overhead, and manufacturing cost. Excuse me, raw materials, labor, and overhead. Those same three things. We're always looking at that. The raw materials used, the beginning raw materials, 100. At the purchases, less was at the end. We use a million one hundred of raw materials. Our labor was six hundred thousand. Our applied manufacturing overhead was three hundred thousand. So the total cost is the raw materials used plus labor plus overhead. That's two million two hundred thousand. We had. 200,000 in beginning working process inventory. Our ending working process inventory was 300,000. So we add the 200, we subtract the 300. That gives us the cost of goods manufactured of a million nine. So this is that statement that we do. It's not a complicated statement.
we add up the raw material, the labor, the overhead, that's the total manufacturing cost. We add the beginning working process inventory. We subtract the ending working process inventory. So the cost of those items that we ship to finish goods was one million pounds. So the entry that we made is page three, one million now. What's our cost of this sold gonna be? 1.7. How do we get that? Our beginning finished goods was what? 300,000. Yeah. I mean, we had 2,200,000. Our ending finished goods was what? 400,000. So once again, if we had 300 in the bank at the beginning, we added a million nine, we got 400 at the end, how much, how much did we sell? How much did we use? 1.8. 1.8 sounds good to me. A million nine plus three twenty two less four one million eight. And I don't think we had any over on the flat over here, did we? Oh yes, we did. We had actual manufacturing overhead. Oh, we got a lot of things here. So, actual manufacturing overhead was 250. So, what are we going to do now? Put a negative for 50,000. We estimated the overhead was going to be what? 300,000. That's what we estimated. It actually turned out to be 250. So it was, so we over applied it. So therefore, we're going to deduct the over applied. We had too much in there. So we're going to have a minus 50,000. Because we over applied the overhead. And so our, our adjusted cost of this, so it's going to be a million eight seven fifty, million a million seven fifty. If we had the cost of goods so at a million eight, but we had too much over, we had too much manufacturing overhead in the number. Our estimate is off, so we subtract it out. So we now have a million seven fifty. So Beg your pardon? Oh, no. <laughs> Nothing. I was just saying. Talking to myself. Talking to yourself. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can pull it out. All right, do me an interview. So I mean, sales will be at like four million. That's what it says. So the sales right, come over here. Four million. What are we gonna do next? Sales is for me. Do we have a cost of goods sold? Mm -hmm. That same number comes here. So what's our gross margin?
What is our gross knowledge? Two million. Well, two. two million. What? Two hundred fifty thousand. We're gonna subtract it. Two hundred. Well, four. Two point four, Doctor Boyd. That was two point four, not two point five. Okay, let me go back here. Cause you do it four million minus the uh, one million six hundred, right? One million seven fifty. Where are you getting one million six hundred from? I thought you said cost of goods sold. Uh let me just see here for a second. Are we using the cost of goods, the adjusted cost of goods sold then? You gotta use the adjusted one, so we just need to take this out. I don't know how this got in here. There's an inconsistent. We need to use the one we put in there. So that was stuck in there, but shouldn't have been there. The learning point is whatever this number is, that's what's going to come in here. It's cost of goods sold. So that that should not have been there. This this should have been a question mark. So we subtract four okay. million minus one seven fifty. Yeah. Then two. Two million two hundred fifty thousand. Okay, so two million. Yeah. Okay, selling administrative expenses were what? 500,000? Yeah, they're 500,000. I'm putting the 500 in. Wait a minute, how's it getting in here? What's our net income? What is our net income? $1,075,000. So this is a good problem for, you know, because at the end of the day, these are the statements that you got. You know, you're going to make journal entries, post to the ledger, but these are what the statements look like. And as you can see, you're just pulling things in they're not that difficult to do. So it should be pretty easy now to go through and answer these multiple choice questions, right? Yeah, but the thing is for a number, the net income, I had used the cost of goods sold inside of the um, the chart okay. and I didn't know I was using it from the That's cost okay. of goods sold. Okay. From okay. That's okay. okay, no problem. Okay. You should definitely avoid that question. So the cost of goods manufactured was what? Probably none of the above. The unadjusted cost of goods sold. Hey. I got a million eight on this line right here. I got none of the above. None of the yeah. above. None of the that above. Right here, unadjusted, a million eight is what we calculated. Oh, yeah. The adjusted cost of goods sold is what? This number here, a million seven fifty. The net income, a million seven fifty. So a lot of those are none of the above. Wow. <laughs> wow. Sometimes that happens. Uh, let's, see. let's see. Let's go to number nine. Should, should call Lathan for this. The length and cut to use predetermined overhead rate of 2340 per direct labor hour. So that's the POR, 2340. 
This predetermined rate was based on the cost formula estimated two seven fifth of total manufacturing overhead with an estimated level of eleven thousand direct labor hours. The company incurred actual total manufacturing overhead of two forty nine and ten thousand of total direct ten eight of total direct labor hours. Determine the amount of overhead that would have been applied to all jobs during the period. That's a good one for a student. So all you had to do was to what? Multiply 2340 times 108. It's 252,720,000. So 252,720. 252. All right. So what's our over under applied overhead? 249,000. Where's that? The actual overhead was 249. We applied. 252. So we did what? Subtract. Oh, uh, do we subtract that? Yep. So, so uh, 3,720. All right. Now I need a journal entry. I need a journal entry. 3,720. Um, I, 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 I debited manufactured overhead. And I credit it cost of goods sold. That sounds correct. You would debit MOH. Because you got to bring that account to zero. So you debit MOH. And you credit CLGS. Because you had too much in there. You estimated that. And so you got to make that estimate because you've got to make these determinations and have these statements prepared before all the costs get in. When the costs come in, then you make that adjustment. Uh, here's another one, but we'll, we'll pass on that one. The same kind of concept. Now, let's go to that this spreadsheet. Let's go to this job order spreadsheet. What were you, what were you all supposed to do on the job order spreadsheet? What were you all supposed to do? You have a demonstration problem that everybody has, correct? So I looked at parts of it just now, so you get a sense. But someone has to do this first worksheet. I think that's team one. You to complete this worksheet and come up with uh, cost, selling price, and POR. Then journal entries have to be made. So in stage one, all those journal entries will be made by team two. Then team three is making these journal entries and so forth. I told you since these journal entries were pretty much set, you could link them to the T accounts. Did y'all do that? You don't have to link them, you can do it the regular way. But I ask you to consider linking them so that when you took the midterm, Laketon wouldn't be slowed down. Laketon wouldn't have to say, well, there's a whole lot of posting and everything. But that's up to you all. So you're going to make the journal entries. You're going to post them to this ledger. 
you then are going to prepare these statements here. I'll clear these out. You're going to work on this midterm. Then you got to get this trial balance done. Let's see, where's our problem at? Let me see if I can find our problem. So as we so went, we oh, I got all that background noise. Okay, as we work the problem, we just did parts of it. So now you can refer back to those, but you should be able now to put all of these parts together. Make these journal entries, post them to the ledger. You supposed to have this submitted by what time? Before class on Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Just in case I say this at y'all midterm. So, you know, I might say that. So, just in case I say that, this might be part of because it's worth 10 points. But what actually is going to happen is we're going to work this as a class. Then every team is going to have one of these on their own to do for the Tuesday after the break. And then we'll do the midterm that Tuesday too. So on Thursday, we're going to work this. This is what your midterm is going to look like. Then each team is going to work one of these out and submit it. we got plenty of time to get together and submit it. But to me, probably the Tuesday after the midterm. And then we will have the midterm that Tuesday after the break. Any questions? So this is it. This is your midterm exam here, right here. This is your midterm exam. Where? Now this is only I think this is only about ten or twelve journal entries. So how much time per journal entry? How much time per journal entry? Valencia, you've been quiet today. How much time per journal entry? Mm, like a minute or two. Okay, a minute or two. So, so you got to get your journal entries done. You got to get them posted to the ledger. You then got to do your trial balance. And those three statements we just did, they're not a lot of numbers. So you just got to be organized. Have your spreadsheet ready to go on that exam. Have your spreadsheet all set up and ready to go. Make sure when you submit your spreadsheet, you got your name in the title. So it'll be midterm, you know, it'll be Valenciana midterm, Joseph midterm, Darn midterm, and that's how you're going to submit it. So we're going to go over the same midterm. Say so what? Everybody's going to have the same midterm. Everybody will probably have a different midterm so how is it a group thing i'm confused the group thing is you got a group 
in class problem. You got a whole class in class problem for two. Then there's a group study problem worth 20 points. Then there's an individual midterm. So are we clear now? So no, everything is going to be due. Everything is going to be due after we get back from break, because our break is next week. Okay, on Thursday, okay. you're going to do this in class problem. Okay, you're going to in class, in class problem. to pull that all together. That's due on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Then you have a team study problem like this. The team will have its own problem, and you will complete that problem over the break. Dude, no. Boyd. <laughs> so it's not we don't have a break over the break. Say what? Boy, it's not a break I, if we I have homework. You, have zero it's zero well, you all want it on? Y'all want the midterm on Thursday? No. Boy, is this is just uh, a in general. The what? So, so when y'all want the midterm? Not next week. Well, next week is spring break, Zalandra. I know. I'm just making sure you said we got a assignment do during the break. I'm just, you know, making sure. I don't care as long as it's not during spring break. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we should have anything to do during spring break. Um, yeah, I agree with that break. statement. Oh, I, no, agree. I agree. No one, no one is going to do it. I need to keep y'all busy or y'all stay out of trouble. <laughs> I may need to keep y'all busy so y'all stay out of trouble. Boy, we are uh, grown. We still got to go to work. <laughs> so I'm going to be busy. <laughs> we do stay out of trouble. I'm more like that. I still have to go to work, so I'm going to be out of trouble. Yeah. Come on. Well. <laughs> Why don't the assignments do Thursday? Can it be on me, sir? Say that again? This assignment is due Thursday. Can it be on me, sir? That'll be a midterm. Maybe. How about that? So team one, did y'all have this first part done yet? Yeah, we um we already gave it to the other team leaders. Oh, so y'all working. Um, well let me ask a question because I only did the top part, so we have to do just basically filling the rest of the entire um first sheet. Like just putting the actual parts. Your team has to submit me this spreadsheet for that whole problem. So. No, no, no. That's not what I'm asking. I'm talking about um. So like on the first sheet, the top part is what we did. The um the actual required part. But I'm asking, we just feeling basically how we got that. Well, what you're supposed to be doing is you're supposed to have it on the spreadsheet. You're supposed to have it on the spreadsheet. So, yeah, you tell them how you got it. So, the top part of the spreadsheet of those three things you have, this shows how it was calculated. Okay, this got is how it was mm -hmm. So, this is our midterm? I don't think so. Now, when you turn what you turn in to me, need all your team members on it. If a person's not on there, then they off your so. But if they ask, put it another way. If you turn in somebody name that's on that's on there, and you got that person for the rest of the semester. So when you turn in this problem, you're gonna have, you know. You have this problem, then when you first get in here, right in here, on this first sheet I looked at, that I look at, I want to see team number, 
and I want to see the names of everybody who, who participated. And what you're telling me is that you're going to have this team going forward. So that's the first thing. And remember, there'll be some assignments where you're going to have to use people. So sometime, you know, I might on a midterm give each team one of these to work. So the team would have to get together and work on this uh, during the class period and get the problem done. So that's another possibility, maybe. So instead of being an individual, it could be a team exam. But you would sign in here. I will put you, you have to get in here by 1045. I put you in a room with your team, and your team would have to organize and get this problem work. Uh, 2011 and 1. So that's another possibility. So that, that might be a possibility, maybe. Depending on how, how you all look on uh, Thursday. So do we understand? So Thursday will be a little practice. It'll be a practice for your take home problem. It'll be a practice for your midterm. So I'll look how I'll look when it's sent in and see if I can call on anybody in your team to represent you. So when you send that in with those team members, when I ask for the explanation of what happened. And anybody other than the team leader can tell me what happened. So anybody on your team other than the team leader who has to tell you what happened, and your points will be based on that. Got it? So make sure that, that anybody whose name you put in here can answer the question about what you are saying. Got it? If their name is in here, they got to be able to answer the question. Is this going to be, you going to post this on your YouTube? I will post this on YouTube later today. Anything else? Okay, so we'll we'll see. We'll see. I'll think about the midterm and what I'm going to do. You know, Thursday won't be the midterm. It's your first time on it. But a lot of us, you know, I'll look at it and see if everybody who's on your team is able to participate. So just keep that in mind. Everybody on your team got to be able to participate. And these none uh, lead persons uh, it might be to your advantage to be able to do, say something on Thursday. But if these support people not saying anything, then they'll be by themselves for the midterms. So I see how y'all do on Thursday. Your fate is in your hand. Your fate is in your hand. Everybody in here. The fate's in your hand in terms of how the midterm's gonna look. If everybody is working, then it'll look one way. If everybody not working, it'll look a different way in terms of how I do it. Okay, so let's work on getting this problem done, which pulls everything together. So you have the individual parts, you have the total problem. Let me see if you can pull this together. And I'm convinced you all can. I'm convinced you all can. Any questions? Yeah, are we going to have a class anytime soon in person? Uh, I was looking at it after we come back from the break. You want it in person on Thursday? 
I might, I might be too quick. Probably. I wouldn't mind, but. No, I have the flu, so no. <laughs> he said no, so no. We, we not, we not having class in person. Mm -mm. What happens is when somebody is sick, then yeah, they can be on now. But if you know, so we just gotta look at that. I'm, I'm gonna take that into consideration. Yeah, you know, when I grade and things like that, I'll take that in consideration. That we're not in person. We've had some interruptions and everything. And every time, you know, I've got somebody who's sick who can't come to the classroom. So, and why I was asking you all about spring break was that, you know, we, if everybody's well and healthy, we can come back after spring break. So that, so that was the purpose of the question, not to get into what you were doing, but seeing if it's feasible to come back after spring break, or am I going to get a bunch of emails with issues after spring break? So so that's why I asked that. But we'll see. But I'll keep that. I'm going to keep all of that in consideration, and we'll look at how you're learning. And well, Mr. Boyd, when you're done with class, can you please email me back? I will email you back when I get out of class. If I don't do it today, it may be tomorrow. I got two other classes today, so I have to prep for them. Okay. But I'll look at it. Uh, but if it's not today, it'll be tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Okay. So one of the reasons I was asking was that computer working because the last time I was in there in 206, the computer wouldn't turn on. So when I had class on that short day, I didn't have a computer. I had a big screen in the center of the, of the board and I had to be on both sides. So I'll check on that tomorrow when I get there. But that's a good question, Jacob. Jacob, are you going, did I see something about you going to miss some time? Bay? Uh, I don't think so. Well, I can get back with you on that. I don't know. Okay, so you're going to be here on Thursday? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, no, no. Mm. Uh, no, because no, I'm going to be in Alabama. We have a basketball game. <laughs> See? Yeah. So are you going to be in, be in on your go-to meeting on Thursday? No, sir, I'm, I'm not. Why not? Cause I'm I'm gonna be in Alabama for the swag oh, championship, the uh, swag tournament. The last one being Atlanta sometime, and she signs in, so you should be trying to sign your classes. Well, Wait, it, that's eleven o'clock <laughs> during the day. I'm I will I will try to sign in. If you can sign in. in, please try to sign in. You know I got this yep. letter from on you and you know, I won't say a bunch of people, but a number of people who are not going to be here and make adjustments. So I'm saying the adjustment you all need to make is you know, take advantage of being virtual, sign in. Got it? Right, 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 right. But I, I, you know, I think I will might be able to make it because I think our game is a little bit later in the day. Right, right. So this is where the virtual kind of helps because so you you're talking yeah. about me virtual on Thursday you work on be here I mean deep face to face so now you got a chance and you have a tape now if I could be over there and do both but it, it doesn't work I'll check on it again because I still have the issue when I'm over there I can't take the sessions so what you all gonna have to decide Thanks. basically is is face to face okay with no tapes. But I have major problems. Okay, you'll have a good one. We'll talk on Thursday. Y'all be prepared. Make me happy on Thursday. Then I'll make you all happy for the midterm. Got it? Got it. Have a nice right. day. All right, you all too. You have a tutoring tomorrow? Yeah, are you going to show up?